Hey guys, welcome to today's video where we are here to chat about the 2024 makeup and beauty trends. I'm really excited. I have been scouring the Google. I've looked at Allure. I've looked at Elle. I'm checking to see what the internet is saying about 2024 and what we can expect for makeup. And y'all, I want to talk about it, okay? So that is what we are here to do today. But first, if you're new, hello and welcome. My name is Kelly and I love all things makeup and beauty. I love talking, I love makeup, I love talking about makeup. So if that is your thing, if you like to chat about makeup too, this is the place for you. Why don't we go ahead and jump into the video? I do wanna let you know these are not my predictions, okay? This, these are not my thoughts. If you are following my friends Angie or Kelly, I will have their videos listed down below. They did a video probably about a month ago where they were giving their predictions on the 2024 makeup and beauty trends. This is like what I actually found when I was scouring the internet. And so I wanna talk about some things, okay? I have some opinions that I wanna share and I want to know your opinions down below. We're gonna start with the first category, and you know, if you think back to foundation preferences over the past maybe two years, I feel like there's been a heavy push with skin tints. It's been all about barely there coverage on your face. People have been loving the look of like their skin peeking through, but kind of the skin tint giving like maybe a glow or a little bit of a base covering up some pigmentation, but very light pigmentation at that with the skin tints. And I have been very vocal on my channel how like that's not my jam. That's not what I'm looking for. My makeup style is definitely very toned down, I would say. I don't really go, although I do have a pink eyeshadow on right now, I don't really go for like the bold glamour bam in your face. But if I'm putting makeup on, I do wanna look like I have makeup on. You know what I mean? Like I do want medium coverage. I'm not a full coverage type of gal, but I have dry skin. I want medium coverage. I do want it to look like I have makeup on my face. And what I have seen, and I will list my resources down below, but what I've seen magazines posting about when they are posting about the 2024 makeup trends is that we are moving to skin-like foundation. We are moving past the skin tint for a little bit more coverage, but not full coverage. You know, like not full glam, not completely beat face, but more of like looking like your skin with a tad more coverage. And I feel like that is where I'm kind of seeing makeup heading because recently the Laura Mercier foundation that released like, I don't know, last year has kind of become like a viral thing and people are talking about the Laura Mercier foundation all over TikTok and Instagram. I personally have not tried it. Now I'm kind of interested. It was like on my radar last year, but I've kind of been in this like low by no by space and I wasn't ready to fully commit on that foundation. But I have to say now my interest has peaked. I'm listening. I want to know because I am definitely on board with this trend. I do have, you know, more of like a natural skin-like finish right now. I'm wearing the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. It's been a huge favorite for me, but I kind of feel like if I'm putting makeup on, like yes, it's going to be toned down, but I want it to look like makeup. I want to look like I have flawless skin, but I'm not trying to make it look necessarily like I don't have anything on. You know what I mean? I spent the time, okay? I just want to look good. I want to look flawless. I want to feel good. Not that I don't look good with makeup because listen in the words of my girl Heather Austin you are a 10 without makeup I am a 10 without makeup but we're here because we love makeup and we love talking about it and I love a product that looks like my skin and looks healthy but gives me more coverage than a skin tint I never got on the skin tint bandwagon and I'm still not on it so that's where we're at here let me know your thoughts down below. What is your skin type and your coverage preference because I'd be interested to hear that as well like I said, I do have dry skin and I do prefer more of like a natural skin like medium finish, but I'm interested to see if there's a correlation between, between skin type and coverage preference. So let me know down below. Here's another 2024 beauty trend that I am 100%, 100% on the bandwagon. It is ombre lips, y'all. Ombre lips 
are making a comeback. I'm thinking back to like, y'all know Jamie Genevieve, right? She's the founder, owner of Vive Cosmetics, but before she had Vive Cosmetics, she was a huge presence here on YouTube, and she still is, but I'm thinking of like her style of signature ombre lip, and I feel like that was a huge thing maybe like circa 2018, but like, ya yeah girl has never gotten out of that face, okay? I love an ombre nude. I like to go in with like, I'll take my uh, Makeup Forever Endless Cacao. It's like an eye lip pencil, but I will put that on like the outer portions of my lips. And then I'll take like my Charlotte Tilbury Kim KW, which is a very light, almost peachy type of nude. And I will put that on top and kind of like pat it. I will add like more coverage and more saturation in the middle of my lips and then kind of blend it out with a finger or by like pressing my lips together and I'm into it. I've been into it. I'm still into it, but I feel like it hasn't really been a thing in the beauty space. Like people have not really been focusing on the ombre lip anymore. It was almost like a thing of the past, but the people are saying the people who are the people. I don't know. All right. You're the people. I'm the, pe the people, the people, the makeup people. <laughs> on the Google are telling me that ombre lips are back in 100% down for it. Sticking with lips, I do feel like we are seeing very glossy lips and we are going to continue seeing very glossy lips in 2024. We have seen an influx this past year of lip oils. I know that lip oils have kind of been around for a couple years, but I feel like this last year, like everywhere I turned, it was like lip oil, lip oil, lip oil, lip oil, lip oil, lip oil. And the people, the internet, the Google, they are saying that glossy lips are still going to be a thing in 2024. And it's not that I'm like against a glossy lip, okay? I do enjoy like a glossy lip here and there, but I was gonna blame it on my kids for a minute, but I can't even blame it on them. I was gonna say, I'm a mom, I'm kissing my kids all the time. Like I don't wanna get lipstick all over them. But in all honesty, before I had kids, I was into the matte lip, the liquid lip trend, and I've just never gotten off that game. I guess I'm just not a huge fan of like getting lipstick all over the place is, is kind of how I feel. You know, like if I'm drinking water, if I'm eating, I don't want, like I don't want lipstick stains on my Stanley Cup straw. You know what I mean? So I just don't, I also, I have very long hair. Okay, like my hair is long, my hair is long. And so I wear, look, I'm trying to blame it on my long hair, that's a lie too. If you've been here for a while, you know that like 98% of my videos, my hair is up and like 98.5% of the time my hair is up in real life. So I can't even blame it on that either. But I was about to say, if I'm outside and the wind is blowing, I don't want my lipstick to get in my, my lipstick to get in my hair, my hair to get in my lip, glip, my lip gloss. That's true too, whatever the reason. I'm full of excuses over here. Whatever the reason, glossy lips just aren't my jam. I do have a few lip glosses here and there. I do find that I am more likely to wear a lip oil like on a complete no makeup day. Like if I'm at work, I haven't done my makeup. If I'm at home and my lips are feeling a little chapped, I'll reach for a lip oil. But I'm, I don't think that I personally will jump on like the lip oil glossy lip trend. Like I'm gonna be here for an ombre lip and I'm even down with like a satin lip stick, but as far as the full glossy lips that people are saying are going to be a thing in 2024, that's not going to be my thing. That's not going to be my thing. Circling back to 2017, 2018, winged liner was a thing, but it was black winged liner. Like everybody was creating a wing. We were putting our wispy, big false lashes on. That was the trend. I feel like the last several years, it's been more my style. I'm not into a winged liner. I would do it back in the day when I was filming for YouTube, but like on a day today, I wasn't wearing a, a winged liner and I still don't. I don't really wear liner at, at all. All that often at all. I'm, I'm not wearing a winged liner or liner in any way, shape, or form. But Allure and Elle and all of those beauty magazines are telling me that the 2024 trend is going to be a bold liner, but not necessarily bold and black. We are seeing it as like bold, colorful liner. I'm thinking when I was looking at these articles with Allure and Elle, and I'll try and find pictures and stuff and insert it while I'm talking. But I, I'm feeling like a lot of the places where they're getting this information is like the runway. And there were a lot of runway models who had like the natural type of skin and then like a bold 
uh, colorful winged liner is where the trend is going. And that kind of goes hand in hand with the other trend of like a pop of color. The, the people, I, I don't know what to say. Like the people, like the magazines, like what, what do I say? The magazines were saying that a pop of color is going to be the thing in 2024, whether it is a pop of color on the lips or a pop of color on the cheeks or a pop of color with a bold liner. That is where the trend is headed in 2024. And you know, while I'm not going to be on the bold liner trend, I don't think that one's going to be for me. I can see the pop of color. We've already seen it in the Tower 28 Kung Fu Panda collab that was released this year. I know my friend Kelly Gooch, I think featured that like bright red blush on her channel. So that is an example of a pop of color. We've seen it with Natasha Denona with their Berry Pop collection. They had a Berry Pop lip combo that I am waiting on to get to me as well as their blush trio which did feature a very berry blush. But when I'm looking at the magazines and seeing these pictures, it's a very neutral eye with some mascara. And then you either have like a pop on the cheeks with the lips or just a, like a bright lip, something like that. A pop of color is making a comeback. And for someone like me who is a neutral lover and my style is more toned down, I'm a fan of that. Like I will do minimal lip makeup, put a bold lip on out the door. Uh, I will, you know, do a bright eye and then like a neutral lip and the rest of my makeup neutral like I'm down I can get down with a pop of color it feels safer for me more comfortable for my aesthetic and my style of look also in that same bandwagon going hand in hand with the bold liner with the pop of color we are seeing a comeback of heavy blush not heavy blush in a bad way but looking like you have blush on your cheeks again we've seen that with the kung fu panda red blush we've seen that uh with the tower 28 kung fu panda and we've seen that with the natasha denona berry pop collection that it is a a bright pop on the cheeks and so Allure and Elle, the magazines, the internet, the Google, they are saying that in 2024, heavy blush is going to make a comeback and be a thing. And I'm fine. I'm about that life. To be honest, I love eyeshadow. Okay, I love it. I love playing with eyeshadow. I love the way that it looks on my eyes. I love the way that it looks on my face. But in my personal makeup routine, if something's got to go, if I'm running out of time, if I need to get out the door, it's eyeshadow. It's eyeshadow for me. I'm going to put the blush on. I'm going to do the bronzer. I'm going to put the lip on and some mascara and call it a day. So I'm here for the heavy blush. Another trend we are going to be seeing in 2024 is the monochromatic makeup, which in all honesty, to be fair, I feel like that did start making a comeback last year when we had like the cold girl makeup, or I feel like there was another trend that was all over the TikTok that I can't think of now, even with like the Barbie makeup and the pinks. I feel like monochromatic makeup already started to make its appearance in 2023, but it is said to continue on through 2024. And and that's my personal aesthetic. When I am going to do a colorful look, you can see it here now, I'm going to match my eyes, my lips, just because that's comfortable for me. And I mean, pretty much all of my blushes are like nude mauves, you know what I mean? So I'm definitely into the monochromatic. It feels, again, more comfortable for me. It feels safer for me. And it's my, it's already my personal aesthetic. So I have no problem carrying that into the new year. Here's one I want your opinion on because I kind of saw mixed ideas here with eyebrows. I saw some places on the internet, on Instagram, in magazines that were saying thin brows were coming back. I also did watch Marlena from uh, Makeup Geek Marlena Stell. I watched her video. She talked about thin brows making a comeback. But then other magazines, other places on the internet were saying that we're still sticking with a feathery brow in 2024. So I would be interested to hear, to know your prediction. Like, do you feel like 2024 we're going back to thin brows? Are we staying with a feathery brow, which I feel like has been popular the past couple of years. But then on top of your prediction, I'd also like to know your personal opinion. Like what is your personal style of brow that you feel like looks best for you? I personally have like no brows. <laughs> I have to create a brow every day y'all every single day because my hair is red, right? And it's kind of like an auburn red, but I do have a lot of hair on my arms and it's blonde. The hair on my legs is blonde. And so also my eyebrow hairs and my eyelashes, they're blonde. They're very, very light. And so I feel like 
my eyebrows are pretty much non-existent and the way that I've done my eyebrows is kind of like how I've always done them. This this is how they've always looked. I feel like since I have to create a brow from scratch, I've found the products that work for me. I stick with the the way that I apply my brow apply my brows. I like the way that it looks on my face and I feel like my brows are good. They're not feathery nor are they thin nor are they thick and bushy. So, I feel like for me, I don't really have the fluidity and the ease really or even the desire. I don't really have the desire to try and do a more thin brow or even to try and make my brows a little bit feathery. I'm just kind of like, this is what I'm working with. Like, this is what we got. So that's not really a trend that interests me, but I would love to know your thoughts down below. How do you like your brows? And then of course, we have to talk about the Pantone color of the year peach fuzz. How are we feeling about that? Are you a peach fan? Are you down for the peach fuzz? Are you doing monochromatic peach fuzz this year? I would love to know. I will not be doing monochromatic peach fuzz. It's not that I don't like peach. I have some peach blushes. I probably have some peach eyeshadows. I have some peach lipsticks, but peach is not a color that I find flattering for myself. I'm a natural redhead. My hair is more of an auburn red, but it can be confused for orange easily. And I just feel like peaches and oranges just aren't personally my style that I reach for. I'm definitely, like I'm a mauve girl. I'm a mauve. I'm, I'm very into cool toned mauves lately, to be honest. When I think of peach fuzz, I think it's a little bit more on the warmer side. It is like a lighter peach, but it's on the warmer side. And for me, I personally am more into the mauves. Like I'm more into like the, even the deeper mauves. Give me a berry, give me a red lip. But as far as the peach, that's not really something that I will be diving into this year. I think I'm just going to stick with what I'm already comfortable with, to be honest. You know, thinking about all of these different beauty trends that we're expected to see here in 2024, I'm kind of seeing like a common trend, a common theme, if you will. And it feels like we're very much going into like the opposite way of bold glam. You know, like we're not doing the big smoky eyes. We had grunge makeup was like a huge thing. What, maybe two years ago, grunge makeup was a thing. And I feel like now it's kind of, it's almost dialed back. It's more coverage than looking like just your skin, but it's looking like your skin and then having a pop. Whether it's a pop with monochromatic makeup or a pop in a specific area, it's a pop. It's a pop. A pop is coming back. One that I left off that I have on my list here is Colorful Mascara is said to be making a comeback. I'm personally going to be sticking with black mascara. Black mascara is just my thing. But, you know, on the runways, in the pictures that I've seen, we have blue mascara, we have burgundy mascara, we have, you know, brown mascara, purple mascara, that is said to be making a comeback. But when you see the photos of the mascara, it's on like almost a naked eye or maybe an eye with blue winged liner and then blue mascara on top of it. So I feel like it's almost dialed back in a sense, but not going completely neutral, completely like naked. We still do have a pop of color in there. And I've got to say, I don't hate it. I don't hate that because my personal makeup style is very dialed back. It's definitely very like more on the neutral side in my personal opinion, easy to achieve, quick and easy makeup. But when I do play in color, it would be more like a pop of color or it would be more like, you know, doing something on the cheeks, a little extra, playing with a monochromatic makeup look. That's my personal style. So 2024 may be the year that I come into my own. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But I just wanted to film this video. I just wanted to chat with you guys. I have been asking on my Instagram and also here in my community tab what you guys want to see from me. I've been I've been kind of doing a deep dive into my channel, into what I want my channel to become, what I want this space to be for us, for you and me, what I want it to look like. And, you know, I've reached out and I've asked you guys what you love about my channel. And thank you to those of you who have reached out with feedback. I greatly appreciate it. And it's helpful for me because I want to be creating content that you are loving and enjoying also. But I want you to know that I have heard you, okay? I have heard you loud and clear. People have been saying more get ready with me's, more chatting, more sharing my thoughts and opinions. And y'all, I am not at a loss of thoughts or opinions. And I am more than happy to share. So if that's what you're into, 
We got time, we got space, we got the energy, but also share with me. This is a safe space. Share your thoughts with me. It is okay for us to disagree on makeup styles, on preferences, on how we feel about the trends. It's a safe space. I still love you. You hopefully still love me, but I am going to try and do more chatty. Get ready with me. Okay? I am. So that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you're subscribed before you go because you know what? I want to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye. Do you guys want a sneak peek at like what I do before I start filming? I got this new light behind me and I just sit here and I just go through the colors and I'm like, how does that look? How does that look? How are we feeling today? How are we feeling with this video? And I just play with the colors and some of them look like I wouldn't do this in a video because I feel like it would be really distracting, but some of them are like, they're moving and grooving. And I just found myself, you know, sometimes getting, getting lost playing with my lights.